Melissa, you're still muted. There we go. It wouldn't. How about now? There you go. Aha. It would not let me <laughs> unmute there for a while. Good morning, CSL Los Angeles. My name is Melissa Lewis. <clears throat> it is my pleasure to be with you this morning and uh, lead you in music. And I'm going to start off with one that Dr. Keith requested. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. in fear we're gonna let our light shine no more living in fear we're gonna let our light shine no more living in fear we're gonna let our light shine let it shine let it shine let it shine I'm gonna let it shine this little of mine. I'm gonna let it shine this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Good morning. morning. Thank you, Melissa. You're welcome. Look at that smile on your face. <laughs> well, I'm just happy you can hear me now. I kept getting, you can't unmute. You can't unmute. <laughs> well, as we we're experiencing and have most of the morning, Zoom has played with their settings again. So it's we're all going to be doing a little bit of, um, if I may use a sports analogy, some punting along the way. So, I love it. Um, I had a basketball think, coach who always used to say, you just got to make the adjustment. There you go. Make the adjustment. So that's what we'll do today is make the adjustment as we, oh, I'm good. You know, I, after the week we've all been through, um, my uh, intention for the day is for us to all just be together and just feel the energy of love that's present in this virtual room and be, um, conscious and conscientious to send that love back out to the universe. And so, um, that's the entire um, objective of our day, day today as we come together for what we call our Sunday celebration service. And in as much as there may be things that are challenged to find to celebrate today, I believe that what we can celebrate first and foremost is the ability to be together in this forum. So thank you for blessing us with your music along the way. And I know there will be there's great music that you have for us at, throughout the service. And Travis is going to um, be our go to to he's going to have to ask you to unmute and then you'll unmute. So you have to All right. a second to do that. Amen. And so good morning to everyone. So thank you, Melissa. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles virtual home. I'm Reverend Dr. Keith Cox, and I am theor not theoretically. I am technically your spiritual leader, and it is my pleasure and my um, responsibility and my honor to be with each of you and us collectively today. 
you're joining us live on Zoom and or Facebook Live. It is May 29th in the year 2022. It's Memorial Day weekend here in the United States of America where we memorialize and remember all those who lost their lives fighting for the freedom that we have in this country. Many of those freedoms are in question today. Um, and so today let's um, do our best not to judge uh, what's transpiring on our planet today and uh, do our best to embrace love, to embrace the oneness of life itself, and to remember what our role is as, uh, as practitioners of this wonderful teaching and philosophy and faith and way of life known as the science of mind. And so we come together today to not only remember the spiritual truths that we know, but to live in gratitude for the opportunity to express those spiritual truths and to emanate and to emit the energy of the one life itself and to honor those that have fallen um, from living life today. And so I invite you to be comfortable wherever you are um, in your space to um, canoodle and cuddle up wherever you may be while watching this, even if it's at a later date on YouTube, to find a nice beverage to imbue, imbibe in. Mine is uh, tea and water, and so let's keep ourselves hydrated both uh, mentally and emotionally and physically in life as we share this time together in our service. I'm going to put onto the screen our welcome slides for the day and get us going on our service. So here we go. And so we are the Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles, and we are a community that has been coming together for over 30 years here in the land of Los Angeles, California. And our vision statement for our community is supporting individuals finding their personal self-empowerment through a spiritual awakening. Today, it is our objective as a community to support each other in finding our personal self-empowerment through a spiritual awakening and to know that that spiritual awakening is the very thing that buoys us um, as we navigate challenging times in life. So not only do we know who we are in the good times, but also in what we call the bad times, as well as all of life itself, to remember indeed who we are. And so we come together on these Sunday mornings to do just that, to live in remembrance, to set a course for the week that's in front of us, and to use the creative power of the intelligence that we're each imbued with in a way to consciously, to the best of our ability, chart a course in front of us that is reflective of our divine nature. In our philosophy, faith, and way of life, we're taught that we are one with the only thing that there is, and that is life itself and that it's both an energy field but also an intelligence and as individualized expressions of that intelligence having the stamp of individuality placed upon ourselves we have the ability to make a choice in life to not only how we show up in life but how we respond and react to life itself let's begin that by taking a moment to honor each other in the act of namaste namaste is the Sanskrit word for I bow to you. Bow not in an act of supplication, but through an act of intentional honoring the individual and the power that exists within each and every one of us in all sentient beings and all of life. So let's all take a deep breath in, placing our hands in prayer position above our heart or on top of our heart or in front of our heart our eyes closed, once again, taking a deep breath in, let's move into this act of namaste, bringing forth into our mind's eye that third eye chakra that's on the screen, that light that is a reference point as to the power that is within us and the wisdom that guides us through life. Let's honor that with each other as we bow forward saying namaste taking our hands in prayer position, raising to our third eye, back to our lips. As we bless that which we've received and give, we send back out into the universe. As a community, as I said before, we've come together for 30 plus years now in the land of Los Angeles. And we're a community that not only practices the teachings and the philosophy and faith of 
Dr. Ernest Holmes, who is the creator of the teachings of the science of mind, but other related new thought teachings with the very essence of this philosophy, faith and way of life is that we have the ability to make a difference in life that we have the ability to make a difference not only in our own lives, but the lives of others and how we show up, how we choose to know um, about what we know about the power of the divine that exists within all sentient beings and how we use the power in a way to propagate good on our planet. Good being a synonym for that infinite power that you call source, the thing itself, even referred to as God. And so we support everyone on their own personal journey of finding personal self-empowerment through a spiritual awakening. That awakening is simply the remembrance of who and what we are as divine beings. Today, I invite us all to remember that in a new way. We open each service with a ritual called calling in the light. Today, we're going to do that as well. Um, leaning into our new song called Holy Light that Melissa will sing for us in just a moment. But I know that for every single one of us, this has been a week of um, shock to our system with the shootings in both Buffalo and in Uvalde, Texas. That there are often times when events such as these take place that it's hard to remember who we are as divine beings and in moving through the initial stages of shock and grief and anger and disbelief. It's oftentimes very difficult to forget that there is a universal consciousness of life. And so our ritual this morning is to bring back to remembrance for all of us the light that exists within. And so we perform this ceremony this ritual to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths and all sentient beings come from the one great universal presence, which we call spirit. And so the purpose of this ritual is to draw into our gathering this morning a more conscious awareness of our oneness and the unique qualities that we possess as complete expressions of the divine. And so as we look onto the screen at the light itself and feel the vibration shift during this experience, may we become ever more aware of the light of life that exists in and as all expressions of life. All expressions of life. Which includes you and it includes me. Today let's remember those that have passed on. Memorial Day is the day that's set aside to remember with gratitude and pride all those who served and died for our country and for our freedom. And so may this day be filled with memories and peace for all of us. I'd like to take a moment and read the names of those that we've lost over the last eight days that I believe did indeed die for our country and for our freedom. In Buffalo, those that died were Margus Morrison, Andre McNeil, Roberta Drury, Aaron Salter, Geraldine Talley, Celestine Cheney, Hayward Patterson, Catherine Massey, Pearl Young, and Ruth Whitfield. On Tuesday in Uvalde, Texas, in the elementary school massacre, 
the lives that were lost, who have transitioned to the next expression of life, are as follows. Ava Morales, teacher, aged 44. Irma Garcia, teacher, aged 46. Amiri Jo Garza, age 10. Xavier Javier Lopez, age 10. Yuzia Garcia, age 10. Jose Flores Jr., age 10. Alexandria Lexi Rubio, age 10. Eliana Eli Garcia, age 9. Tess Marie Mata, age 10. Eliana Elijah Cruz Torres, age 10. Annabel Guadalupe Rodriguez, age 10. Miranda Mathis, age 11. Rogelio Torres, age 10. Maite Rodriguez, age 10. Leila Salazar, age 11. Alicia Ramirez, age 10. Jace Carmelo Luvanos, age 10. McKenna Lee Elrod, age 10. Jala Nicole Silguero, age 10. Jacqueline Jalen Cesares, age 10. Nivelhai Bravo, age 10. Let's affirm for each of these beings that have passed on to the next expression for their loved ones and for ourselves to receive this Apache blessing. May the sun bring you new energy by day. May the moon softly restore you by night. May the rain wash away your worries. May the breeze blow new strength into your being. And may you walk gently through the world and know its beauty all the days of your life. Let's each accept, receive, and believe and affirm that this blessing comes true for each and every one of these beings on their journey. Melissa is going to come on the screen and take us through our new chant of holy light. Please feel free to bring into your mind's eye these individuals that are either with us or in a new expression of life. And I invite you to have a spiritual awakening during this time. I am 
I am strength and love. And so it is. Thank you, Melissa. Yes. So let's all just take a deep breath in and exhale, feeling the blessings that are multiplying and the gratitude we have for the opportunity to honor those lives in that very small yet powerful way. So Melissa, your next song for us is one that touches my heart and soul. It's probably one of my favorite songs you ever do. I just love the lyrics to it, and I think it's so appropriate for today. Um, and tell me the title of it again. The title of it is called um, I Don't Know Why, and it's mm -hmm. actually an Amy Grant song. Take it away. This is one of those moments when all that really matters is crystal clear We are woven together by whatever threads of life that have brought us here We are stripped of all our layers We are Tell me something real and nothing more Cause I don't know why And I don't know how Well I don't know where Baby, all I know is now So I'm here between the bookends of everything that was in or what will be that there's a wealth of information, not so many answers, it seems to me. So I face the unfamiliar. Nothing is clear. <clears throat> Only blind and faith can carry me from here. Cause I don't know why. And I don't know how. 
so touching. So touching. Those lyrics are just um, crystallized into my soul. Ugh, they're so good. <laughs> they're so good, and it's just so uh, profound. It's such truth, right? So the truth, yeah, just the truth. So I thank you for um, shining that light with that song this morning, as well as the others. And I kept seeing as you were um, dancing, as you were singing, moving, that the song on the uh, piece of art between the two Buddhas says courage. Yes, it does. It's and, you know, word of uh, the and cur is, that's the word of the year. You love it. Yeah, for me, it's, yes. The origin of the uh, word courage is it's courage, which is Latin, which means to live from the heart. Love it. So that's what we're all called to do right now is to live that's from the good. heart, even if our heart feels broken. Ugh, absolutely. Right. Thank you. We'll see you in a bit. Thanks. Yes. And so as we I move into the part of the service today for my message. I um, really not pondered a lot, but I, I felt like I could not give a traditional Memorial Day message after um, what has transpired this week. And I know having um, spoken to a few of you and those of you that were on our week midweek meditation on Wednesday and read some of your social media posts that we're all, there are many of us that are in pain right now as a result of these horrific events that have transpired. And so today it's my objective and intention to address that to the best of my ability in a way that reminds us of our capacity to not only heal, but to stay in the moment, which is what we just have been sung to that that's all we have is right now and then also to face some hard truths and use that as a template as a um not a template but as a launching pad if you will for where we go from here and to honor ourselves and uh, allow ourselves to feel i'm going to begin by reading a poem that was written by amanda Gorin, the poet laureate that um we all are familiar with that she released during this time titled everything hurts and she writes everything hurts our hearts shadowed and strange minds made muddied and mute we carry tragedy terrifying and true and yet none of it is new we knew it as home as horror as heritage even our children cannot be children cannot be everything hurts it's a hard time to be alive and even harder to stay that way. We've burdened to live out these days, while at the same time blessed to outlive them. This alarm is how we know we must be altered, that we must differ or die, that we must triumph or try. Thus, while hate cannot be terminated, it can be transformed into a love that lets us live. May we not just grieve, but give. May we not just ache, but act. May, we, may our signed right to bear arms never blind our sight from shared harm. May we choose our children over chaos. May another innocent never be lost. Maybe everything hurts. Our hearts shadowed and strange but only when everything hurts may everything change this week as i process this information and continue to do so and have had moments of being a news junkie and moments of sitting in introspection i kept coming back to the question of what do i know to be true in this philosophy, faith, and way of life that I've practiced along with other relative teachings of New Thought over the years. And this quote came up for me that I've shared on our New Thought text before that I had shared with me from my soul brother, Dr. David Goldberg, the former um, editor-in-chief of the Science of Mind magazine. And it's this. According to quantum physics, a particle vibrating due to your sound when you speak can affect a molecule inside a star at the edge of the universe. This phenomenon is known as quantum entanglement. The greatest illusion of this universe is that of 
separation. This quote gives me comfort to know that as I feel pain and everything hurts, as I know is true for each one of you as well, that we have the capacity and the ability to impact this world, not only through our sound that we speak, but the energy that we emanate. That it's important not to pretend as if this these events did not happen in our world along with other horrific things that have transpired. It's important for us to not pretend like we are not in this moment of pain as a species on this planet. And it's important for us to also remember that we have the capacity and the opportunity and the ability to invoke change, both individually and collectively. Our theme for this month has been pray, play, and slay, baby. And I've leaned into that this week and certainly in preparation for today and asking myself, what is mine to do in the sense of praying? I've committed to a month of praying, playing, and slaying. And praying for sure has been present in my life as I've leaned into the spiritual practice of affirming spiritual truth, but also of asking myself, what is it that I know to be true? What is it that I'm willing to align to that is true? And what truths am I willing to affirm for life itself and those that are the stamp of individuality that spirit has placed itself upon? Remembering that in this act of praying that we've spoken of this month, that it's an act of invocation, an act of communication. It's an act of conversation with source, the thing itself. God, that infinite, in, in, omnipotent power. And so praying, I think, is one of the easier ones to do in this time, even when there is discourse and concern and confusion. But play. Do we feel comfortable in playing during these times? Well, for me, my remembrance was that play in this context is to move into that which brings joy in my life. And then I think it's important to remember that even in times of sadness and hurt, that joy is still present. And so for me, it's been surrounding myself not only with my intimate chosen family of loved ones, but to spend lots of time with my four-legged spiritual offspring, Sweeney, and her friends, and getting lots of cuddles, and rubbing her tummy, and letting her touch me, and kiss with me, and even she got to take a nap on the bed with me this week for healing purposes. To remember that the playing aspect of pray, play, and slay is to give ourselves the instruction, the permission, the intention to be attended to in the way of rising to the occasion to bring our best to whatever we can in whatever situation we're dealing with, faced with, experiencing. Playing also means, and it did for me in the situation, was to surrender to the wisdom that is within me and to let the spirit guide my life. We have sung many times, I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. It's all, when I let go, it's only up to God. I basically get out of my own way. So what is mine to do once again in the act of praying, playing, and slaying? Well, I can certainly tell you the word slay has been a bit difficult this week for me because if you look at it in its origin or definition, slay means to kill. And so unfortunately, we have witnessed those that have been slayed in that context. But it also means to bring your best. And sometimes bringing our best during these times of turmoil and challenge is to simply move inward, to turn inward, and just live in a state of surrender and allowing the power and the presence and the wisdom that's already there to guide us into the next step of expression. I want us to look at this morning how are we to show up as new Thoughtonians in times of wisdom, in times of turmoil? I'm going to share with you some writings this morning that are by my beloved friend, Dr. Jim Lockhart, which many of you are familiar with, from his New Thought Evolutionary Press, his blog that he writes. And he wrote this in regards to new thought wisdom in times of turmoil. And this was, I'll just read it. It begins by a quote from Nayura Wahid in meditation. If the ocean can calm itself, so can you. 
We are both salt water mixed with air. Dr. Lockard writes, our first task as students of New Thought principles is to take dominion, meaning sovereignty, to the best of our ability over our own thoughts, emotions, and actions. We need to calm our being. Remember, these are in times of turmoil. We need to calm our being and move toward a greater realization of spiritual poise. Only then can we be effective in bringing the highest consciousness of which we are capable to the world. Is that easy? Sometimes, sometimes not. And I want us to be clear that when he speaks of spiritual poise, he's not speaking of spiritual piety. He's speaking of a grounding, of a holding oneself in a manner, in a way, whereby we allow the power, the omnipotent, infinite presence of wisdom and of life and light and peace and power and beauty and joy to make itself known to us. That's a result of the spiritual practices that we've all done over the years. He goes on to tell us, well, what does that mean? He goes, well, this does not mean that we're not, that we do not feel our feelings when injustice or tragedy of life events occur. It's natural for us to feel sadness, anger, even rage, frustration, and more. But as we feel these feelings arising from our reactive self, we've been trained to bring the inner observer forward to examine ourselves with the ultimate goal of transforming our reactions to something that includes love, compassion, and clarity. And that is, I add, even if that love and compassion and clarity is simply for that moment. And then be open to doing it again for the next moment that we can. He continues, anger can be an initiating energy, but it does not contain within it what within it the needed nurturing qualities that energy does not, let me read that again. Anger can be an initiating energy but it does not contain within it the needed nurturing qualities that see things through. We need to transform and transmute that energy into something more powerful and loving. While this may be a great challenge to accomplish, we know that it is possible. Remember, we have the capacity to turn possibilities into a reality, but we do that through a spiritual awakening, the awakening of remembering the power that is within us and the power that we have while we're at choice. He goes on to write, new thought teachings prepare us for times when we are maximally challenged. For many of us, these are such times. We see conflict, violence, racism, sexism, political disregard, and more playing out seemingly everywhere. But we've been taught to attain right perspective or the capacity to see a different picture than what is appearing before us. In other words, to affirm that higher idea. Step one and step two in spiritual mind treatment, God is, I am. He goes on to write that we know that healing is revealing, that dis-ease must first reveal itself before it can be healed. We know that much of human behavior is a cry for love and acceptance and that ignorance and fear leads to the majority of our suffering. Seen from this light, what is occurring in many places is the rising of symptoms of deeper dis-ease to the surface. In the New Testament, Jesus says, let he who has eyes see. This means that we can only see what the, see what the consciousness that we have developed will let us see. In New Thought, we learn to expand our consciousness to see some of the deeper meanings of things on the surface i.e. to see beyond appearances. This is wisdom. And that wisdom is essential to helping our society move through the healing process that is underway, but which needs wise stewards to move towards something greater. Our society needs shepherds, people of wisdom who can be active in every sphere of our culture to bring what wisdom, to bring that wisdom to bear, to speak a word of truth where there is an absence of awareness to call for love when there is an absence of compassion, to offer optimism when pessimism becomes dominant, to be present as a being of love and light, we need nurturers who will support the unfolding healing process of our society so that minimal harm is done, 
so that we can hospice what needs to die and midwife what is all ready to be born. The quote from Rumi informs us this. If your eyes are opened, you'll see the things worth seeing. If indeed we desire a world that works for everyone as we say we do, how better to begin the process of achieving it than to be a living example of new thought, wisdom, and action. We begin by doing that inner self-examination referred to at the beginning of this post, to take dominion, sovereignty over our thoughts, emotions, and actions by learning and living the principles of new thought. The question that we get to ask ourselves, are my eyes open? not to what we just see in the physical world, but open to what's the meaning behind it. We have to ask ourselves, do I see what's worth seeing? And am I willing to be a shepherd to the next thing on the ladder of conscious evolution? What a calling that we're asked to heed as we move through our human emotions. In our daily text for the day today, which has garnered great response online, it's written, this is written, it's okay to feel sad, angry, or frustrated. Whatever you're feeling is okay. Sometimes we forget we are human and we will go through ups and downs for life is unpredictable, fragile, and constantly changing. Let your river of emotion flow and feel its depth and be kind to yourself. You are human. That was from Walk the Earth. And yet you are human, as well as you are spiritual. Plato tells us we can easily forgive a child who's afraid of the dark, but the real tragedy of life is when the human is afraid of the light. Today, we're called to not only call in the light, to not only see the light, but to be the light in a new way. Today, let's remember that light is a quality of the divine within you and within me, and so we don't really have to invite it in. Our role is to let it out. The acronym, as many of you know, that I have created for light is Living in God's Healing Truth. Today, we are all being called to be a shepherd, to be a midwife, to a new way of being, a new way of thinking, a new way of showing up. We all know that that which has transpired is no longer acceptable in our world. Is it easy to figure out what is ours to do? Maybe not, but that doesn't mean that we can't ask the question and invite in the answer and be willing to listen to it. Dr. Lockhart also wrote a recent blog posted on May 15th prior to these events that I think also speaks to where we're at today as a species of being and something that is important for us to listen to and to pay attention to. Please excuse the language as it's not the purest. And this word that he wrote here, which you will hear frequently, is intentional. It's titled, You Can't Bullshit the Creative Power of the universe. Begins in a quote by Elizabeth Gilbert that says, I've never seen any life transformation that didn't begin with the person in question finally getting tired of their own bullshit. Marian Williamson says, signs of big change are everywhere. Our only choice is whether the changes will come through wisdom or through pain. We all know that today is the day for a shift to take place. In humanity. Just recently I was having a conversation with a friend and I was bemoaning these shifts and I made a statement of how I feel like my generation has done our part and it's time to hand it over to the young ones to do it. And I got a tongue lashing from him, most appropriately actually. What I realized this week is our work is never done. Our work is not generational. Our work is not based on what pathway we've walked before. Our work as awakened beings is to not only live in the light, but to heed the call to make a difference. The first vision statement for this community on our planet. 
And so I invite you to hear these words as a call for our own personal growth from this blog that Dr. Lockard wrote, so that we may each be willing to say yes to the calling to be a shepherd, to be a midwife, to be that person that has a spiritual awakening on their pathway. And let any vestige of this article ring true so that we may be open both individually and collectively and as a community to do what is the right thing next to do to invoke change. He writes, one of the problems with seeing the creative power of God as a being is that we think we can fool beings. Subconsciously, we, sub we subconsciously project our own human limitations onto this idea of a being, including our ability to be tricked or fooled. This leads to all kinds of problems, from self-delusion to procrastination to spiritual bypassing. Trying to bullshit the creative power of the universe by thinking your thoughts have no power is like trying to BS the air around you by holding your breath. Trying to BS the creative power of the universe by saying it's all good when you feel the opposite is a wasted effort. Many of us are part of that old school 20th century metaphysics of affirming it's all good when we know that that in truth is not the case. Today, let's begin to see things anew and open up to not the BS, but standing in truth, unadulterated truth, and moving from there. Ernest Holmes said the biggest obstacle to using the science of mind successfully was a lack of self-honesty. We may be able to fool others and even fool ourselves, but we cannot fool the creative power of the universe. Let's let that sink in. We may be able to fool others and even fool ourselves, but we can't fool the creative power of the universe. I think we realize this on some level, but we still too often try to bullshit our way out of problems or ignore what we should be facing. We succumb to our fears and give ourselves the false security of ignoring the truth. We live in a universe of unlimited potential, but our ability to actualize that potential is limited by our own consciousness, what we can come to accept and believe as true. When we use prayer, spiritual mind treatment, we're not pleading with God to change, but we're treating our own consciousness to accept a greater truth. When we do this, we become capable of actualizing more potential for good. We've all done that before. When we treat our own consciousness to accept a greater truth, we become capable of actualizing more potential for good. This process though, requires that we be radically self-honest or restrict our willingness to accept our good. The path to our good is often through our own darkness, our fears and false beliefs. We do not turn away from the darkness within. We work our way through it repeatedly until we come to accept that greater truth. I invite us today to begin to develop this process that Dr. Lockhart speaks of, of going deeper, of asking questions, of listening to the answers that come up. Carl Jung says that when we, when we must deal with problems, we instinctively resist trying the way that leads through obscurity and darkness. We completely forget that these results can only be brought about when we have ventured into and emerged again from the darkness. What he's telling us is that in that darkness of mind, there is fertile soil. That in old school metaphysics, we was contrary to that. You only affirmed that which is good. And from our modern day psychological perspective of mind and understanding that yes, healing is an act of revealing, it is important to go into the darkness and to address and confront it so that we may dispel and heal. So I'll take a deep breath in and exhale. I know I'm throwing a lot at us this morning intentionally and it's going to go a little long, but I invite you to stay present. Lockhart continues to write that getting out of our own way is the essence of using the science of mind or any other philosophy of life. This means overcoming the inertia of negative thinking and belief. Inertia meaning doing nothing. It means listening within to source 
and to not without where we're often too led to negativity. It means overcoming our own BS every day. When we resist self-honesty, we co-create a society based on less than the full truth. Well, how do we do this? How do we move into a state of honesty, of not, of, of not using BS, and begin to inquire in a way that we let Source speak to us? I think we do that by asking ourselves these very inquisitive and honest and developing questions to ask ourselves what's really going on here am i willing to let spirit guide me am i acting or knowing in truth or am i peddling bs am i willing to change and then be willing to listen to the answer to that and if not why and listen to that answer. And if the answer is yes, then ask spirit to guide us, what is my next step? And let it show up. And then ask ourselves, are we willing to take that step? In a commencement address to Pitzer College recently, John Lovett stated this, one of the greatest threats that we as a society face is simply put, bullshit. We're drowning in it. We're drowning in partisan rhetoric that is just true enough to be a not to be a lie, in industry-sponsored research, in social media's imitation of human connection, in legalese and corporate doublespeak. It infects every facet of public life, corrupting our discourse, wrecking our trust in major institutions, lowering our standards for the truth, making it harder to achieve anything. The question that you and I get to ask ourselves today is at what level are we participating in any of that? Remembering that there's only one mind and we are one with that mind. We are not only subject to that mishagas, that Love it speaks up, but we're also subject to a higher idea that we can call out the Mishigas and lean into the higher idea and use it as a guide, as a guidepost for life. We get to ask ourselves in this moment, today, the life we've been leading, how often do we withhold the truth or even resist seeking the truth? If it seems that doing so will not be to our advantage. How often do we deny the failings of our leaders because they're on our side of an issue? How often do we let ourselves off the hook to avoid something unpleasant or frightening? All of this has led to a culture based on deceptions. As we know, politicians hide the truth. Marketers make billions of dollars convincing people to buy things they do not need or really want. Too many members of the clergy try to control people by threatening hell and damnation, leading to religious cultures based on the avoidance of sin rather than the pursuit of truth, beauty, and justice. While we wait for others to act for justice, we're seeking to trick the universe in order to confronting our own fears. We fool ourselves by thinking that maybe someone else will stand up while I make myself harder to see. We're all reaping the results of such thinking today, certainly in the United States, where we're seeing the results of too much negativity, confusion, and bullshitting ourselves and one another. Lies lead to hatred, and hatred can be a powerful force. I recently read a statement that said, those that hate, hate with conviction. Those that love need to have the same conviction. Lockard writes that when I try to bullshit the creative power of the universe, whether because of my own fear or a sense that I'm somehow going to trick nature, I do nothing to that power. I only harm myself and perhaps others who are affected negatively by my resulting action or even worse, inaction. The creative power is untouched by my failings. That idea alone can give me strength. So what do we do and where do we go? We are each called to be our best selves, to actualize as much as our, of our infinite potential as possible in this lifetime. The science of mind can be a powerful tool to use in that process of self-development. 
Whether we use it or not is up to each one of us. But let's stop pretending that we can expect our lives to work while being anything but radically self-honest with ourselves and others. And so today, let's all take a step into radical self-honesty. Let's use this message that's been shared today as a message from the universe, as a reminder to step out of the inertia of negativity, of inaction, of not using our power in an effective, objective, and intentional way. Let's each choose to be a conscious participant in making a difference. I don't know what that means to you, but I can hold that belief and affirm for each and every one of us that the meaning makes itself known and we each act upon it. In closing, I'd like to share with you a quote from Dr. Ernest Holmes in The Science of Mind. And he writes, in The Science of Mind, we do not say everything is all right when it's all wrong. We do not say peace when there is no peace, but rather we try to discover what is wrong and why we do not have peace. We do not say that people are not poor, sick, or unhappy. We ask why these things should be if the original cause of all things is harmonious, perfect, radiant, and happy. In the science of mind, we learn that persistent, constructive thought is the greatest power known and the most effective. If the visible effect in our lives is not what it should be, if we're unhappy, sick, and poverty-stricken, we know the remedy. The truth is always the remedy. And the truth is that the law of liberty is the only real law. When we reverse the process of thought, the effect will be reversed. Today, let's you and I commit to radical self-honesty to the best of our ability and to move forward on a new plane of action while still holding true to a life of compassion, of loving, and of giving. Thank you. Melissa's going to come back and sing us another song. I could listen to you all day, Dr. Kidd. There's a bluebird sitting on a telephone wire Just bouncing on the breeze, watching cars rush by Not at all worried, just hanging on tight So baby, why can't I Now there are palm trees sticking up like lollipops Soaking up the heat, letting coconuts drop not a care in the world, just living on top. So, baby, why can't I? Somebody finds a golden ticket in a chocolate bar. Someone strikes oil in the dirt. Hey, the prize in the cereal box, the winning bottle top. So many ways it could work. There's a flat in Manhattan with a bayside view. Sun on the horizon up in Malibu. Little change in my pocket going ring a ding a do. So, baby, why can't I? There ain't nothing that ain't in the cards as long as my chips roll in. Hey, with all the possibilities, strictly statistically, someday I'm bound to win. Then I'll live in wonder, looking down from the top, my heart wide open, no way I'm gonna stop. Cause it makes me happy, expecting a lot, so baby, why can't I? Chips rolling, hey, with all the possibilities, strictly statistically, someday I'm bound to win. Then I live in wonder, looking down from the top, 
my heart wide open, no way I'm gonna stop, cause it may Makes me happy, expecting a lot, so baby, why can't I? Yeah, it makes me happy, expecting a lot, so baby, why can't I? Ah, I love it. Thank you. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it, love it. So wonderful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. And so now I'm putting on the screen the method for each of us to support our community financially and know that that is um, appreciated and welcomed. And I went back the wrong. There we go. And so let's come together on Sunday mornings to not only be together in community, but also to support our community. Um, in its uh, thrive, being able to thrive and grow. You can do that by going to our website, csl-la.org and click on donate, the app in the app store, Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles, click on the upper left bars and you'll see the donate tab where you can mail in a check that is 1200 North La Brea Avenue, West Hollywood, California, 90038. Or you can call me, my phone number's on the screen if you'd like for me to handle for that for you privately. As we all do that, Melissa will come back and sing for us. Love is my decision. Feel free to sing along as we affirm for each and every one of us that we are abundant, we're well, we're prosperous, and we grow. And today's a day that we live with radical self-honesty and participating in the good of the universe. And so it is. And so it is. Is my decision. It's up to me to give of my heart. Love is my decision, and no one else can tell me to stop. And once I decide. Thank you for being here today, Melissa. So my pleasure. Having you here and um, so good, just so good, just touch my heart. So, <laughs> thank you so very, very much. Absolutely. So a big thank you to Travis Smith, who is our audio technician, who um, keeps us tuned in and vibed up to, uh, for audio tech for all of us for technology and audio. A big thank you to Robert Hensley, who is um, taking care of our social media needs. Um, as well through Facebook. A big thank you to each one of you for being here today and supporting us. May today um, has, hopefully today has been, I affirm that today for each of us has been the next step in a healing process uh, for all of us. I want to remind you that we have a midweek meditation that takes place Wednesday morning between 8.30 uh, and 9 o'clock. It's about 20 minutes. I welcome you all to join in on that. You can get all of that information on our website, csl-la.org or through our weekly e-newsletter that goes out first part of the week. And um, that's all there along with our social media sites, which we are on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. All of that can be found through our website and or through the app in the App Store, Center for Spiritual Living. And so please know that you're all um, deeply special to all of us. A reminder that we will be back in person uh, June 12th in the building at 1200 North La Brea, continuing our monthly uh, in-service meetings uh, in person once a month. We'll be doing that. And so um, may you all have a very blessed Memorial Day and may you um, know that you are loved and appreciated and celebrated just as you are. I'm going to close with a spiritual mind treatment and then we'll say goodbye to those of you on Facebook. And if you're on Zoom, we can stay on and have a brief hello. And so today I affirm for each one of us 
that healing indeed has revealed itself to us through us. It's the only way that it can. That today we've allowed spiritual truth to be a resonance field for us that we align with. That we dismiss and dissolve any inertia in life and we begin anew starting right now. I know for each of us, we affirm a deep sense of gratitude for the opportunity to not only come together today, but to grow together, individually, collectively, and as a community. And that growth is making itself known as we hear things anew today. That we end this service by bringing forth into our mind's eye the beautiful faces and names of the loved ones that were spoken as we said their names out of a remembrance and an honoring of them to know that their life and their journey is honored and so we continue to honor them and all those who fought for our freedom by living freely, by setting ourselves free from the chains, the enslavement of old ideas and fears and doubts and negativity, of any false disbeliefs or ideas, and choose today as the day to embrace our spiritual nature, the spiritual truths, and to use the power that we're each imbued with in a new, most wondrous, impactful, and effective way, knowing that the law of life does what it always does, which is responds by corresponding. That law of life is a law of liberty. And so we use it consciously, purposely, intentionally, knowing that what returns to us is a reflection of a mind that is healing, that is aligning, and that is affirming and reaffirming. God is, I am, it is, and so it is. And so it is. Thank you all. May you spend time with loved ones over the next few days. May you cherish those loved ones. And may peace be ever present in all that you do, say, and be. Have a happy Sunday. Thank you.